can't stop because we have no idea what we have. Hashem is telling you, I'm preparing you. I'm talking to you. I'm giving you different trials, different tribulations, different issues in your life because you just don't get it. You just don't get it. You're still complaining about money for no reason. You're still complaining about stuff you don't have when you really have it. Do something. Fix yourself. Little by little, I'll give you more. But fix yourself first. Stop asking for a raise when you're not even doing any good with what I gave you. Because eventually the clock runs out. If the Mashiach shows up, everyone's going to see it. Everyone that's alive is going to see it. And if you look, the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 10. It's extraordinary what it says here. For all of those sick souls in the world who don't believe in reward and punishment, all you have to do is go to this chapter. In the time of the Mashiach, this is what it says. But you have forsaken Hashem, who have forgotten my holy mountain, who set the table for God, who filled the libation for many, many, in essence he's saying, not only did you forget God, you went and idol worship. You went to Christianity. You went to Catholicism. You went to Buddha. You went to all this garbage. Instead of the source of all water, you went to some cistern, broken cistern in the middle of the desert, looking for what? He gave you everything. You went somewhere else. He gave you the money. You used it to go against him. I will consign you to the sword, and all of you will slump down a slaughter, because I called and you did not answer. Chem says, I kept sending you calls. I kept sending you text messages. I kept talking to you. Nothing. You don't pick up the phone. Hello? I'm not home. Hello, I'm not home. Hashem's talking to you. He sent you this, he sent you that. No, no, I'm not home. You're telling God I'm not home. I spoke and you did not hear. You did what is evil in my eyes. And what I did not desire you choose. Therefore, thus said my Lord Hashem, Behold, my servants will eat and you will starve. My servants will drink and you will thirst. My servants will rejoice and you will be ashamed. My servants will exult from goodnesses, good heartedness, and you will cry out from the pain of heart and wall from a broken spirit. All of the people that don't want to do tshuva, don't want to learn musar, don't want to fix their midot, don't want to do nothing. No, no, no. Hashem loves me. Hashem loves me. What loves you? You're an enemy. Every week, every week you say he doesn't exist by not keeping Shabbat. Every week you're making his children sin by walking immodestly. Every day you're violating your time that he gave you by using it to watch baseball, football, basketball, everything but Shio Torah. Every day. You're not a friend, you're an enemy, according to him. I pay my lovers, those who keep my mitzvot for thousands of generations, but for my haters, meaning the opposite, those who don't keep mitzvot, I punish them by giving them cash to their face, their reward right up front. Why? To eliminate them. Eliminate them before the Mashiach comes. Eliminate them because they have no Allah Abba. Eliminate them because he doesn't want to see them anymore. I gave you money, you used it against me. I gave you health, you used it against me. I gave you legs, arms, eyes, ears, everything, you used it against me. Time of Mashiach, he says, part of the first level of punishment before Gehenom, before the hot, before everything, he's going to make all the Reshaim watch the Tzadikim. He says, what? This is what you could have. Your whole life you chase money. Why? Because you were looking at MTV cribs, looking at other people's houses. One of the Ten Commandments, Velo Tachmod. You're not allowed to be jealous of people. It's one of the Ten Commandments. Even the Goim know this. You're not allowed to be jealous of people, what he has. You can't look at other people's house. Oh, look at his house. Look at his this. Look at his that. What are you looking for? Why are you looking at his house? What's it to you how much money he has? What's it to you what kind of car he has? Why are you looking? Why are you jealous? Are you saying God made a mistake? He should have gave it to you, not him. Are you saying God made a mistake? Chutzpan. Why are you looking at his money? Why are you looking at his pocket? Why are you counting how much money he has? Why? Why do you care? Why do you care if he's successful or not? He pays your bills? You're not allowed. You're not allowed to do these things. Why? It's going to ruin you. It's poison. So your whole life you're chasing money. Why? Because you want to be like him. You want to be like the guy that has a penthouse. 
and the car parks in the living room. It's not good enough for him to park in a garage like the rest of mankind. He has to park, put the car with the fumes, with all the garbage. He wants to put it in the living room so he can look at it. If that's what you've gone to in your life where you have to look at your car in your living room, you, my friend, are worse than that. You have serious problems. You need to look at your car in the living room, you're miskin. You know all those people all day they take selfies. All day take selfies, selfies. Well you don't have anybody to give you a picture. Take a picture of you. You can't ask any normal human being, say, take a picture of me. All day taking selfies. I right, once in a while I understand you want to take a pic there's nobody around, you want to take a selfie with you and your wife or your kid or whatever. But all your pictures are selfies, you have nobody around you to give you a picture. Or people take pictures of their food. What do I care what you eat? Why do I care what you eat? They take pictures of their food. They went to a restaurant and show everybody what they ate. Why? Why? Because they want to show off. I went to this restaurant and you know how expensive this restaurant is. I'm in this way. I'm in Tahiti. I'm in Bali. I'm in this one. I'm in the casino. I'm in this. I'm in Gehenom. I'm in uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm in this one. I'm in all these places. Why? Why are you causing other people to be jealous? Why? Why are you causing other people to be jealous? You know you're gonna have to pay for it also. Why are you making people jealous? Why? We have to start realizing we have to fix it. We have a lot of problems, we have a lot of sicknesses, but it's okay. It's okay, it's okay to be sick. Because it's a cure. It's a cure. You learn Torah, it's a cure. You start doing things, it's a cure. It's okay to be sick, it's not okay to deny it. The guy gets angry because somebody cut him off in the highway. You're sick. Why are you so angry? He cut you off, big deal. So why he cut you off? So what? Who do you think you are? What? No one's ever gonna cut you off. You're like the everybody they're gonna cut off everybody else except you. What you never cut off anybody? You're the tzaddik driver? You always signal when you uh, when you pass, even at two o'clock in the morning? You signal, you never cut off anybody, you're Mr. Tzaddik, there's a keeper on your, on your roof. So why did he cut you off? Oh, she gave me an attitude. Okay, so she gave you an attitude. He gave you an attitude, really. He's trying to make her give you a test. So why did she give you an attitude? Does that mean you have to act like an animal? No. Relax. Why? Mashiach comes, no more time. No more time, even if the Mashiach is going to come in 10 years from now. Maybe it's not enough time, unless we start working on it today. We start working on it today, we start fixing ourselves today, we start looking in the mirror the way the mirror is supposed to be looked at, and start saying, I have this problem, that problem, this problem, and that problem. I have a wealth of problems, pick one. Pick one to fix. You can't fix everything one day. Pick one to fix. Pick one. Start working on it. After you start it, okay, get some momentum, fix the next one. Get some momentum, fix the next one. Get some momentum, fix the next one. Next thing you know, you're a different, better version of you. You're not as sick anymore. So at least when the Mashiach arrives, or when the loan is being called from Shemaim earlier than you expected, you say, ah, here's my tzaddik son. Oh, tzaddik, I was still uh, learning Allah Shabbat. I was still, you know, but you're tzaddik. No, no, I, I'm telling you, God, I can't lie to you. I didn't know the Allah of Shabbat. It was three books. I only knew one. No, you're tzaddik. No, what do you mean? God, I, I still didn't know. That, no, no, you're tzaddik. Why? Because you tried. I gave you tools and you tried your best. You're tzaddik. Whatever tools I gave you, you did the best you could with the tools. You're tzaddik. Nothing to worry about. Yeah, there's certain things you have to pay the bill on, certain things, but you're tzaddik. Why? You tried your best. You tried your best, you're okay. You have nothing to worry about. Mashiach, no Mashiach. You have, you have nothing to worry. You tried your best. But can any of us really, right now, answer yourself before you go to sleep? Think about this. Say Shema Yisrael before you go to sleep. But during Shema Yisrael, you say, Am I trying my best? Am I trying my best? Am I try am I really the best version of me like I am right now? Am I using all the tools that I have to be me? The best version of me. If it was chasing a million dollars, I would be like a missile. 
Go in a big Knesset, not so much. Learning Torah, not so much. Working on Shlom Bayit, eh. Raising kids, eh. Everything is like 25, 30, 40 percent. It's like the dying iPhone. You turn the iPhone on in the morning, it already died. That's sometimes our mitzvot. Am I trying my best? You do it before. You wish my side say, Am I doing my best? Am I more concerned about collecting mitzvot or collecting dollars so I can tell people my stock account is at all time highs? If you have a huge bank account, a huge stock portfolio, a huge investment, retirement, but there's poor people around you, you have to know. You have to know this. You have to pay for that. God didn't give you money to your savings accounts. You have money. There's poor people around you. There's people that are learning to all their whole life. They have nothing to eat. You have worried about your savings account. You have a problem with your mind. You're worrying about an IRA account. The guy didn't make his rent payment. Doesn't have chicken to put in a chicken soup. You have a problem. He's connected to you, you have a problem. So this is, just gives you a small token of the disease we have. Good news is we can fix it. How? Start like this. You listen to Shio Torah, you go home, you ask yourself a question, where do I stand? And tomorrow morning, Be'ezrat Hashem, you wake up refreshed, alive, and aware. I have something to fix.